Prima Media's Mining Weekly is interviewing Yuri Vessels, the chairperson of Vanadium Resources Limited, the Australia-listed company known as VR8, which is developing the steel port drift vanadium project in South Africa. Hi, Yuri. It's great to speak to you once again. What benefits does VR8 expect to accrue from the partnership that it has entered into with China Energy International Group? Yes, China Energy is a very large corporation, probably 20 or 30 times larger than ESCOM. But they also have an engineering division and they bring to the table the excellence of having developed numerous projects worldwide, not only in power provision, but also in the resource industry. So they would be doing the EPC for us on that if our negotiations culminate in an agreement. And then uh, secondly, what they also bring is the F component, which is more focused on the balance sheet because uh, EPC obviously needs the balance sheet to attract the right kind of funding. And uh, they would bring that uh, gravitas to the relationship. Then thirdly, and I think that's where things would be going ultimately, is that um, China Energy is end user ultimately of vanadium flow batteries, being a power provider. So there's a lot of synergies that could follow from our relationship with them, particularly starting off with offtake and also with the uh, Moiplatz 248 megawatt plant that they're building currently, where the vanadium flow batteries could be used. And then, of course, with the production of electrolyte that for uh, the sale into China or elsewhere in the world for the use by the vanadium flow battery. So there's quite a lot that, uh, that could happen with the relationship unfolding with it. Getting back to the finance factor that you mentioned, how much is the vanadium project VR8 is developing in Limpopo province expected to cost? Uh, it's difficult to say where it is now. Current, it, two years ago, we were at $211 million capex. We obviously have to add the usual sources and uses that one has when you fund this kind of thing, like uh, capital overruns, working capital requirements, uh, servicing of, of your interest payments, etc. And that would then also have to take account of some of the changes that we've made. Inflation has played a role and so on. But if I had to take a swipe at it of... Uh, all sources and uses about $300 million. And can you give us a bit more insight into the mine? You know, tell us about the proposed steel port drift mine, the concentrator, and the so called salt roast leach plants. Yes, steel port drift is located in the, uh, the eastern bushveld complex, not far away from older operations like Mapox and Vantix, uh, Kennedy's Vale. We would mining three layer of uh, the upper uh, zone of the bushrock complex where the magnetites reside. Unlike other producers, past producers, we would be mining the disseminated part of the ore body and what's called the massive part, which is the pure magnetite. That requires then that we put it through a concentrated plant that consists of a three-stage crushing circuit. Uh, that is to, to remove all the gang. So we don't have a a messy a concentrate, at least not having a messy a product going into into the milling circuit. Once milling has occurred, then we have a water-based uh, magnetic separation uh, facility and then a filtration plant. That would then give us the concentrate, roughly containing about 2.1% of vanadium pentoxide, which is very high uh, for world standard. That would then go into the salt rose leach plant. That's a, obviously a much more complex plant. It will start off by mixing uh, sodium sulfates with the concentrate that would then go into a kiln, uh, heat it up, and then once that has happened, then it would be leached with water. Uh, desilication would occur and then from there we have the option of doing two uh, AMV production circuits so one is a batch one and the other one is continuous and they are focused on two different products the batch is focused on on producing a VTO5 powder which carries a premium particularly suited for vanadium flow batteries and the other one would be focused on producing VTO5 that's the the end products that we would be, would be producing but we could also just stop at the AMV production and then sell that as well if, if that is what's required. And with South Africa's jobs being scarce, how many people do you think will be employed during construction 
And then when it gets into steady state, how many people could be employed permanently? It's also difficult to say exactly how many, but if I had to take a swipe at it, about 50 people uh, that would be involved with the construction side of things for both the concentrator and for the salt and leach plant, and then about 300 people that would be needed to, to run both plants once they are running fully operationally. We would be uh, dependent on, on, the, on the local workforce. There are numerous mines in that area, of course, as you know, uh, that makes our job a bit easier. But we also wish to upskill uh, the local population, get them involved. Uh, that's going to be quite a focus for us. And we are designing the plant to cater for that. Getting back to the financial side, how much financial assistance will China Energy International Group provide? Well, at this stage, it's uh, the focus would be on the F of the EPCF component, which is uh, the balance sheet. Uh, that means that they have got the influence with banking institutions like Sinusure or, or Bank of China or uh, Sokchen or, or whoever else in the world that provides uh, funding that would then take uh, their balance sheet into consideration before providing us with the with the funding. And then, of course, they could also be interested at some point to become involved as a strategic investor. That's not excluded entirely, but that's still uh, not yet finalized. And then there's also the possibility of, of them pulling in with the presence that they give uh, to us, particularly fo uh, focusing on the vanadium flow battery component. Uh, we're attracting then alternative equity funders uh, that would then be interested in particularly the relationship that we have with, with China Energy and what it might bring. And what other funding will be required and where do you anticipate you'll source it? The other funding would, uh, besides the bank lending uh, components, which could be up to 65%, uh, the rest would be equity funding. And that would then happen uh, with respect to a strategic investor or from from company uh, funds, there's no no other real way of doing it except for for ultimately putting your hand in your own pocket and 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 moving on with it. Then before the loans uh, and the banking institutions funds are used for the construction. And what offtake arrangements are being made? Currently, we have MOUs with Chinese firms, uh, Panjin, Chongqing, and Innerflow. Innerflow is a producer of, of uh, vanadium flow batteries. The other are producers of vanadium nitrites or uh, vanadium pentoxide powder or vanadium pentoxide flake. Uh, that uh, is still under negotiation to continue with that, but we're also in talks with European off-takers uh, that would then uh, possibly culminate into into off-take agreements uh, with them. Uh, also, there are the chances of us doing an off-take agreement with uh, China Energy's retail trading division. So we don't think that will be a, a, a major issue. What we have to focus on now is, is finishing off our EPC agreement and then the feed component uh, before we, we finalize that. And if everything goes well, when do you think the first vanadium will be produced? We expect that with the current trajectory to be in the beginning of 2028, and that's providing for the delays uh, that we uh, experienced by virtue of changing the location of our salt rose leach plant to steel core drift uh, and the optimizations that we had to give effect to on the salt rose leach and not the, at the concentrated plant. And then, of course, it's a considering that, that we would be reaching fit next year, but next year. And clean energy is always being sought these days. How will you power your plant? We will hopefully be powering our plant through a weeding uh, transaction with China Energy with respect to the Moy plants, uh, solar plant. That is part of the benefits of dealing with the China Energy. They also can construct a, a solar plant on site for us. We need about 17 megawatts of power to supplement. Uh, they could produce a solar plant for us or constructed for us to, to supplement that requirement. Working with China Energy is obviously opening up a lot of other uh, avenues for us to get to the energy component that we need. And then we had an announcement from China yesterday about uh, vanadium steel rebar and standards. What is your comment on this new standard that has been imposed by China for vanadium steel rebar? 
It's long overdue. Uh, they've opposed that already to a, to a lesser extent in 2017. And the reasoning behind it was to make sure that these buildings that they build don't crumble and fall uh, because vanadium supplies the ductility that's needed for rebar. Uh, there was an opt-in period in for the current standards that was imposed for five years or six years, and, and that has now culminated into a regulation. So it's a projected that it would require about an additional 14,000 tons of vanadium pentoxide uh, requirement for the market, and it's expected to have acquired a beneficial effect on the pricing environment as it had previously in 2017 where there was a spike in the vanadium price resulting directly from these rebar requirements. And finally, Yuri, what, in your view, should be the main takeaway from all this? The relationship with China Energy is something that could give us an answer on many of the downstream efforts that we would be looking at, uh, particularly the production of electrolyte and then also possibly also getting involved with vanadium flow batteries. Something that's different uh, for vanadium in our instances that's not so with other resource companies is that with vanadium, you have the possibility of owning the resource even after you have effectively dispossessed yourself of it in the form of electrolyte being in a battery that you rent out to the owner of the battery. Uh, and then you will get it back again and then you can resell it, uh, which is unusual for mining companies. What this focus is of China Energy is, seems to be com coming from a major player in China, which has already got abundant vanadium, looking to tie up with a resource such as ours, which at this stage is the largest in the world and, and uh, probably the highest grade, and then looking at the future of tying that in with what's happening with the vanadium flow and mass energy storage. That's the, the thematic, I think, that, that's, that might unfold here, which is, which is quite exciting. That was Creamer Media's Mining Weekly. Speaking to Yuri Vessels, the chairperson of Vanadium Resources Limited, the Australia-listed company known as VR8, which is developing the Steel Poor Drift Vanadium Project in South Africa.